What up everyone, today we'll talk about the first phase of proper gene expression and that is chromatin remodeling. Okay, let's do this. Remember from our previous lesson, gene expression simply means taking a specific region of DNA and using the DNA as a blueprint to make functional proteins that determine your traits. So this is the overall, oops, sorry about that, I didn't mean to mark that up, but so this is the overall picture of gene expression from DNA to protein. And as you can see, there are sequential steps that must occur, mainly transcription and translation which we will not be discussing today. Instead, we're going to go over a crucial step not, presenting in, not presented in this image, and that is chromatin remodeling. So let me just write that down. Uh, chromatin remodeling. And if I were to... Um, put this step in, this will, this will go before transcription. It will be up here somewhere. So what is chromatin remodeling? Well like, well, like we discussed before, chromatins are condensed DNA, the form your DNA takes a majority of the time. The condensed form is made out of highly structured nucleosomes, DNA wrapped around histones, and a term to describe this compact state is called heterochromatin. And here lies the issue with gene expression. This compact state, which is what the uh, chromatin takes on most of the time, does not allow free and easy access to DNA. As you can see, the DNA is tightly wrapped around the histones and it's very compact. Many components need to engage the DNA to start gene expression. And thus, chromatin remodeling is the process of changing the chromatin structure, either making it more compact or less compact. And since we're talking about initiating gene expression, we're, in, we're interested in loosening up the chromatin. And this less compact state is called euchromatin. So heterochromatin, more compact. Euchromatin, less compact. There are several methods of chromatin remodeling, and they fall into two major categories, histone modifications and ATP-dependent machinery. Before I go into histone modification, I need to briefly talk about modified amino acids. 
We know that amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, but they can also be covalently changed. What do I mean by that? Well, here's a regular lysine right over, he right over here. And if we replace one of these hydrogens with a methyl group, a CH3, we now have methylated lysine. In this case, it's just one, uh, one methyl group, so we call it monomethylysine. And as you can see, the, uh, we can have multiple methyl groups by replacing the other hydrogens, having two and all the way um, up to three. Now, the process of adding a methyl group to a compound is called methylation. Let me write down that down for you. Methylation. There we go. Here's another example of amino acid modification. In this case, it's adding an acetyl group right over here, which is uh, COCH3 at the end of the side chain. And this process is called acetylation. So this is acetylated lysine, and the process is called acetylation. Let me just write that down, acetylation. We're now going to talk about the exact process of how these groups are added to amino acids or else I'll be here all day. But for now, it's just I just want to show you what it means when someone says a certain amino acid is methylated, methylated or acetylated or some other group. And also, this is relevant to understanding chromatin remodeling. How is this relevant? Well, histone modification, which is one of the major methods of how chromatin remodeling works, relies completely on modifying amino acid residues in the histone complex. Here you see the histone complex and we have the DNA wrapped around it. And the end terminal ends of, uh, of the different histone units are modified. The, um, the end terminal ends of the uh, protein chain basically, right? Because we have a C terminal and N terminal. This is the end terminal end. And as you can see, it's showing numerous lysines and arginines being acetylated and methylated. Acetylation is the AC, uh, methylation is the ME. And here it just shows the different lysines, like K is this the shorthand for lysine, and um, R is the shorthand for arginine. Um, there are other types of mod modifications as well, such as uh, phosphorylation, and here we have an example of ubiquitination. Um, and in case you are wondering, yes, lysines and arginines, so lysines and arginines, are the main amino acids prone to acetylation and methylation. Methylation can either loosen or condense the chrom chromatin, depending on the specific residues, while acetylation has mostly uh, been known to loosen the chromatin up because it's difficult for the DNA to, to stay tightly wrapped when you have these uh, acetyl groups uh, in the way. And this is ideal for gene expression because we're loosening the DNA up. We want, to, we want it to have, we want, oh, sorry, I can't speak right now. We want it to be more exposed and less condensed. The other major method of chromatin remodeling is ATP-dependent machinery. This is ATP, and ATP stands for adenosine, adenosine triphosphate. Now, this chemical structure, if you look at it, might seem a little bit familiar to you, and it, it, should, it should be because if we just look at this section over here, this is just a nucleotide. This is adenine. Now, ATP is an extremely important biological molecule because it provides energy for a multitude of different complexes. By breaking these bonds that hold the phosphates together, energy is released. And thus, the most common method is breaking this first bond right here, resulting in the release of, uh, re release of energy, right? Release of energy plus an inorganic, inorganic phosphate 
and uh, and ADP, adenosine diphosphate, because then it because then it only has uh, two phosphate groups instead of uh, three. Again, don't worry about the details right now. Just understand ATP is used a lot because it serves as an energy source. Here we see an example of nucleosome remodeling via an ATP dependent complex. This protein complex, which is made out of several uh, components, uses the energy from the uh, hydrolysis of ATP to ADP, so it uses this energy um, when we break that bond to physically reshape the chromatin, such as moving the chromatins around, um, unwrapping the, the DNA, and even completely kicking out, uh, removing the histones. And thus, these processes loosen up the chromatin and thus make DNA accessible to start gene expression. In summary, we learn the difference between heterochromatin and euchromatin. Heterochromatin is the highly condensed chromatin state that DNA is usually in, while euchromatin is the less condensed state. We need to loosen up the chromatin, basically kind of converting parts of the of parts of the heterochromatin into the euchromatin. We need to loosen up the chromatin in preparation for gene expression, and this is accomplished through chromatin remodeling. Now, um, we went over two main ways, two main categories of how this is done: histone modification and ATP-driven mechanisms. Histone modification refers to covalently changing amino acids at the end terminal of histones, such as acetylation and, and methylation on lysines and arginines to loosen up the DNA. ATP-dependent methods refer to using ATP as an energy source to allow protein complexes to physically move around the histones in order to loosen up the condensation of DNA. Remember, in the context of preparing for gene expression, chromatin remodeling allows DNA to become more accessible to the transcription, to the transcription machinery, which we will talk about next time. So this is all in preparation for transcription. Well, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you guys later.